But we're joined now by Canadian Paralympian and sledge hockey star Greg Westlake. Greg, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it, guys. Uh, so your accomplishments, um, where do I start? Uh, six world championship medals, three medals at the Paralympic Winter Games, gold in Torino, second all-time in Team Canada para hockey points. Uh, and you are going to be playing uh, in 2022 at the Winter Paralympic Games in Beijing for Canada. So uh, I guess the question is, how excited are you uh, for 2022 and for March? Man, we can't wait. You know, for us, we're just excited to play games. You know, it's been a tough time for amateur athletes in general because we don't have pro leagues to play in. So for us to play games, we have to travel internationally and play other countries' best players. And right now, unfortunately, we just don't get the opportunity to do that a lot. And so Hockey Canada has been doing a fantastic job. They have us training at the best facilities with the best people, and we're working our butts off. So, you know, I think when we get to Beijing, it's going to be like getting shot out of a cannon because we're just so excited to compete and uh, show the world what we can do. You know, in all times, uh, in the best of times, at times are tough for Paralympic uh, athletes because of lack of exposure, oftentimes lack of resources. What has it been like throughout the pandemic to make sure that now that you've got this big stage, you're able to take advantage of it? Well, it's huge. You know, for us, we have to be ready. But uh, I know for me, the Paralympic side of things, the storytelling is incredible. And, you know, today's International Day for Persons with a Disability. And uh, for me, that's a day that should be celebrated because some of the best people in my life are Paralympic athletes and people with disabilities that I've met along the way, whether it's a rehab hospital or teammates of mine. And, you know, on our team, we have cancer survivors. We have military veterans. We have people who have been through some incredible things and it's really had a profound impact on my life. So for us, we get this opportunity once every four years to get on that world stage and show the world what we can do. So it's a really incredible opportunity. And it is such a finite opportunity once every four years. I mean, Jesse read your resume and you're often competing at a high level, but, but these opportunities don't come often given the fact that we are still in a pandemic mm -hmm. and given that there has been lots of worthy conversation about the human rights track record in China. Have you been concerned about whether or not these games could happen or if they should happen? Yeah, I mean, I would be of the belief that they should happen. Uh, you know, we've seen in the past that when athletes strike, it, it doesn't change a lot from the government perspective. So for us, especially as Paralympians, we want to go out there and just show what the, what the human spirit can do. And for us, I know before Russia, there was a lot of the same issues, a lot of human rights issues. And we got to go there and change people's personalities. When, when I first went and visited Sochi, Sochi, Russia, it was one of the least accessible places I've ever been to in the entire world. And because we went there and had the Paralympics, now it's an accessible city and there's elevators and, and there's ways to get around. So that's not just great for us to go compete. Now Sochi, Russia is a more livable, better place to be for, for their citizens. So there's a lot of good that comes out of the Paralympics and us going to, to your country and competing. Well, you're a hockey player and rumor has it you're a, a hockey fan as well. And uh, some Canadian teams have been doing really well so far this season. The Leafs, the Oilers, the Flames. But a lot of the conversation, Greg, has been around who is going to come, who's going to perform the best when it comes to playoff time? Because obviously the Oilers and the Leafs have had their struggles in the playoffs and the Flames hoping to get in the dance. So uh, in your mind, who, who is best built here for, for sort of a playoff run? I know we're early, but which of those teams do you think? Yeah, it's, it's tough with the Oilers and the Leafs because right now the fan bases both just want to see a playoff series win and nothing else matters. So it's hard to celebrate this early success, but uh, I think the Leafs have changed their identity more than the Oilers. The Oilers brought back a lot of the same defensemen. They brought back the same goaltending tandem. Um, the Leafs' goals against per game has gone down significantly. They brought in a lot more responsible two-way forwards and Canf and Kasha and Bunting's looking great on that first line. So I think that, uh, you know, I think that it's going to be fantastic for the Leafs this year. I think they're more primed to go on a, a deep playoff run. And uh, overall, the goaltending, I think, for me, is the biggest difference. I think that they have uh, Jack Campbell's playing out of his mind, and uh, that's the difference right there. Yeah, well said. And I think that was Jeff Gordon calling you to see if you would be available <laughs> for the GM job That's in right. Montreal. Uh, the way you were able to break that down, because uh, the the Habs are not in the same position <laughs> as the Oilers or the Leafs uh, and the Flames. We should put them in the conversation as well. So w w let's keep it positive and we'll talk about the teams doing well. I I if you had to look at one that you think uh, could 
uh, lift Lord Stanley, who would it be? Because you know, you're going to join us eventually in this media thing, and, and people like to add us and come at us. So we'll, I'll give them the opportunity <laughs> to put them on the you. spot. <laughs> <laughs> the one Canadian team that's going to end uh, uh, the curse is who? It's, it's a tough one. You know, I think, uh, I think the Oilers and the Leafs are the front runners for sure. But I, I like what the Flames are doing right now. And I think if you just look at full team buy in to a system, Daryl Sutter won a Stanley Cup in 2012. He won in 2014 with an LA Kings team that played a, a similar system that they're trying to get going right now in Calgary. So I love what they're doing. And they're also proving that you can be a really good team and uh, still have individual success. You know, you look at the stats of Goudreau, Magiapani, Killington, Rasmus Anderson, Markstrom. You, you know, those guys are playing out of their minds right now. And and they're putting up numbers. So when players are putting up numbers, they're happy, they get paid, and uh, the team's having success, ownership's happy, so I, I think they can turn a corner. Donovan mentioned Jeff Gordon, uh, as we hear your, your analysis, making a play for the uh, general manager position in Montreal. So um, obviously the Leafs, the Oilers, the Flames doing really well, but on, on the opposite end, I know DJ wanted to keep it positive, but I have to address this. The Canucks and the Canadians, obviously, it hasn't been going well for them. When you look at those two situations, uh, which team do you think, which franchise do you think is, is currently worse off? Yeah, you know, it, it's a, uh, <laughs> it's, it's tough. <laughs> I think that, uh, I think for me right now, I think the Montreal Canadiens need a rebuild. I think that the Vancouver Canucks need a retooling. So mm -hmm. I, I would say that Montreal's going to have the harder time. Uh, I think they have something like eight contracts that are three or more years on them. Um, they have a lot to, to dig out from under, so to speak. Um, you, you lost Shea Weber, your captain, and, and I've done some charity events with him, and he's just an incredible human being. And so forget about what he does for you on the ice, but to lose that from your locker room, I don't know how you can replace that anytime soon. Uh, when you look at the Vancouver Canucks, uh, they have pieces that have proven they can play in the NHL at a really high level. Pedersen, Horvat, Besser, you know, they, they've done it. So I don't love their cap situation on defense, but I think that you could retool in Vancouver and be better quicker. Greg, so you've played on a big stage, and you talk about the struggles of Montreal. And last night, a fan throws a jersey on the ice. So uh, as someone who plays the game, what is your reaction when you see something like that happen? Like, do you think, well, it, yeah, it's pretty disrespectful, dis right? pretty, pretty disrespectful because yeah. I play for Team Canada. So if you throw my jersey on the ice, you throw yeah. your nation's jersey on the ice. Um, so that's my first reaction. But no, I mean... I think if you buy a ticket to go into the building, you ha I mean, you don't have right to throw anything on the ice at any point. Uh, I think that you should be tossed and banned if you do that behavior. But uh, no, I mean, at the end of the day, these athletes are trying. They're playing the game that they, that they live and breathe for. They want success more than any fan in the building wants success, and they're trying to figure it out. So, you know, patience is key, and, uh, you know, just see what happens. But they're not going to be bad forever, and you're out of Jersey. You do play for Team Canada, and you know the expectation in this country, no matter the, the team or type mm -hmm. of hockey, men's, women's, uh, sledge, uh, minor, it, it's always gold. And really, if it's gold, uh, people are relieved, and if it's not gold, people are upset. What is this tournament set up like in terms of who you're concerned about and, and what the team needs to do to bring home gold? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, lots of teams are great. Russia has a great team. USA has a great team. And, and again, we haven't seen a lot of teams because we haven't had the chance to travel and play everybody. So f for us, it's just about the opportunity to win a gold medal. And I'll tell you a quick story. In 2002, when I was just getting into para hockey and I, I was kind of, you know, starting out my Olympic dream, I got to watch the 2002 Olympics and watching Team Canada beat Team USA 5-2 in Salt Lake City. And Mario Lemieux has the no assist assist through his legs. And then the women's team goes out there, and that's the game where they had like 30 penalties called against them. They found a way to overcome, triumph, and win gold. It, it made me a fan for life. It gave me chills up and down my spine and made me want to wear that crest on my chest and, and just have that opportunity. So I think when we have these events on a world stage, you get that chance to, to make kids fans for life and get them into our great games. So we're just thrilled for the opportunity. Uh, we're going there to win, and uh, I really do like our chances. Well, can't wait to watch yeah. uh, and, and can't wait to celebrate uh, all the athletes on this day, which is super important. But also, uh, you're now stuck with us. You're a friend for life. We're going to bother you yes. to come on this show again. Uh, so take care of business in Beijing first, but we'll talk to you again soon. Good luck, Greg. Awesome, guys. Appreciate you.